Hey guys, this is Josh. Uh, I got a nice treat for you today. Uh, this is my second interview that I've done with uh, Jason Crowetic, one of the co-founders of Cordal. Um, if you've listened to my first interview, you'll know that um, I've been a investor or whatever you might call it, stakeholder in Cordal for a good amount of time now. Um, actually behind me there on the right, whoa, that little device over there, whatever it is, <laughs> um, is actually uh, one of the full nodes that I built for myself. Um, and that's probably one of the things we'll get into today is how easy it is to get set up and get started with it. Um, but before we get into the conversation, I want to give just a quick backdrop. Um, thinking about the explosion of crypto in general, kind of that whole digital asset ecosystem. Um, if we go back just a couple of years ago to 2019, the whole crypto market had trading volume of around $4 trillion, which I mean, to me, that sounds like a lot of money, right? I could probably do some things with $4 trillion. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to trading volume of major assets, $4 trillion is actually not that much. And we jump forward a year to 2020, we look at kind of the exponential growth path that we've been on here within crypto. Then 2020, we had about $10 trillion traded within the digital asset ecosystem. So not just Bitcoin, but across all cryptocurrencies. And in 2021, so just this past year, because um, right now we just head into 2022 here, crypto volume jumped from 10 trillion to over $60 trillion. So wow, you can see that, that. That's substantial, substantial growth curve, right? I mean, the thing that comes to mind is that global warming hockey stick, right? That we all have seen. And that to me says that there's immense trajectory. And I think about all my people in my network that I know of that are even loosely involved with crypto. I mean, they're barely even just touching the surface of things like Bitcoin. Um, so there's so much room for growth here within this space. That's why I'm excited to talk to Jason today, talk a little bit more about Cordal. Um, and one of the you know, ways that I think about Cordal, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but to me, you've got your kind of your, your major blockchain institutions, so to speak, of Bitcoin and Ethereum, and maybe there's a couple little other ones there. But beyond that, most things are pretty much clones or forks off of those two major networks. And there really isn't another, or is there, um, major blockchain network. And to me, that's where Cordal is so different because it's really been built from the ground up. It's not a clone. It's not a fork. It's not a copy. It's something unique and different. So maybe if you want to give just a brief overview as to kind of the foundings of Cordal and what it is, and then we can dive into some really exciting things that I know we want to talk about for today as to what we're doing on the Cordal network. Yeah, absolutely. And you are correct. There are... I believe five or six that are actually built from scratch that are not clones, but the majority of the other ones, even the ones that have other functionality started as a clone of whatever other platform, either Ethereum or Bitcoin, or a lot of them came from a couple others that were also Bitcoin clones, and then they added other functionality to it. So yeah, there are just only a handful of ones that are actually from scratch and Cordal is one of those. Um, and so what Cordal's initial mission was, is to literally be an infrastructure platform for the world. And now what does that mean, right? It means that it's going to be able to host websites. It's going to be able to take care of the economic system completely. It's going to be able to do everything that you normally use your computer for, but with a blockchain backend that secures everything and an underlying platform that allows all the user accounts to be the same, no matter what uh, service that you're accessing on top of the network. So it makes it so that there's basically one authentication it sounds like it's centralized, right? Because there's one authentication for everything, but it's not. It's a completely decentralized network that's just a foundational layer underneath everything that allows for a lot of really cool things to happen. And it also secures everything completely. So it's taking the concepts that were used in Bitcoin for the, the digital money, right? And adding the extra, extra functionality on top of that to do things like data storage, web hosting, application hosting, uh, different types of communications and stuff like that. So it's literally built to be infrastructure for the new world, for uh, uh, you know, the new internet of the world. And so that is exactly what it is. And uh, today actually was the very first day 
of the Coral Data Network being able to uh, publish websites. So today is actually a historic day. I believe that we are the only blockchain in the world that can do this, that can actually do the data and application layer for you know, hosting websites. This is something that no other blockchain can do. They can do uh, some of the backend stuff, but they cannot do the entirety of a, a full website on top of the blockchain. So um, this is a massive day for Portal. And this is one of our main phases of the launch um, concept that I put out, uh, what, years ago now. Um, mm -hmm getting this part done is huge, right? Like this is absolutely a historical day, especially for Cordal, but for the world, I mean, this is going to be a day that's going to be remembered because this is the launch of the new internet, like literally. So um, it's very, very exciting. And everyone on Cordal is extremely happy about it today. Um, and so we're, we're seeing the new functionality of the platform today. So it's uh, absolutely awesome. Yeah, I think uh, there's been a little party on the, the Coral Discord for sure. Everyone's going <laughs> yeah. wild and crazy. I see that there's, uh, you know, tips being thrown out. Everyone's soaking cord on everyone else, which is nice. Um, but, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize, especially outside the Coral community, how long you guys have been working on this too, right? So this <laughs> yeah. isn't something that just, oh, in the last month, wow, we spun this whole thing up. And you see so many projects that just come up out of nowhere. You know, they clone, they fork, they do whatever, they take a templated, you know, copy of something, and then they just put their little spin on it. Um, can you just give people a sense of like, you know, what, what the team is like and how long you guys really been working, you know, subterraneanly behind this? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, for me, this is about eight years in the making. Um, I started coming up with some of the concepts and getting other people to help me come up with other concepts and building the initial development team uh, in 2013. So this has been something that we've been coming up with for quite a while now. Um, I did my best to find the best and brightest that I could with the right mentality to actually get this done in the way that uh, we believed would be the correct way to do it, right? And so it took a lot of effort to both find those people and to find the right people with, with the mentality that this is going to be something that has no ownership. This is going to be something that has no intellectual property. That's the only way something like this can work. We did not do an ICO. We did not get a big amount of funding at the very beginning because we had a stack of coins. No, the blockchain started at zero with zero coins on it and everyone minted from that point on. So it was built to be completely ethical in every way. Sorry, I'm getting a, a call on Discord. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. You're gonna be getting hit up a lot today, I'm telling you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we made sure that the ethics were there a hundred percent, right? Um, and so it's yeah, about eight years now that we've been putting all of this together. And we've of course found a couple new developers recently uh, who have taken on an immense responsibility in getting uh, the Cordal Data Network going for us. And are some of our old developers who have been around for a while are not as active right now. So if we didn't have those new community developers coming in, we wouldn't be moving forward. And that's another thing with the foundation of the platform is that it's built by the community, right? The community is how this thing is gonna continue. And that is what one of the main focuses was, is to ensure that this was a community developed platform, 100% open source, and anyone could come in and help us move it forward. And that's going to continue uh, for the foreseeable future and forever, right? Like this is, this is a platform that's built to outlive everyone. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's uh, really, really awesome. <laughs> correct, correct me if I'm wrong here too, but I, um aren't two of the main developers, uh, people that weren't involved as founders in the community, right? So, yes. um, you know, that speaks volumes to me where so many other projects, they have their tight knit teams that, you know, most of them, you've never even heard their names. We know who you are, which is fantastic. Um, and you're, you're stuck on the outside. There's no way to really get involved in the community. Um, so maybe just, you know, real quickly uh, say something about that. And then also, you know, what kind of skills would new developers, you know, need that are wanting to come into the community? Are they going to need new languages they need to learn to build Cordal? Like, how does that work? 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the actually the two main developers right now who are working on the platform were developers who came in after the launch. So they were not uh, one of the original team. And I use the, the, the word team very loosely because uh, anyone can essentially become part of our team. You literally come into the community, say, yo, I'm a developer. Can I help out? And we'll get you involved and start teaching you how to do things uh, and, and get you part of the team, right? So it's really actually community developed, unlike a lot of these others where they have like their teams who were from Harvard and they just keep that one team going forward. That's not how an open source decentralized platform can work long term. Like, how is this one team going to continue to develop this thing forever, right? It's just not possible. That's how companies are built. And a company is not the same thing as building something that's fully open source and available for everyone to use. And so we had to like a lot of people like don't quite understand what we mean by this. And so I am constantly explaining like, yes, this is actually literally developed by anyone who can come in and put their time towards developing it. And so if you have that will and that desire to help us, then you can do it. And as far as the languages go, uh, the core is written in Java, so that's a really well-known language, and the UI is Node.js, which is just JavaScript, and so they're two really well-known languages, and it's the same thing for publishing new applications and websites on top of Cordal Data Network, is you can use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? So any language that runs client-side, which those are the three main ones for building websites that run client-side, um, you can build those on top of portal data network right now. You don't have to learn some new uh, smart contract language, which is really kind of bastardized what smart contracts are even supposed to be. And in my opinion, it's it's just a lot of nonsense in, in things like Ethereum, where you're dealing with some new language that writes a smart contract, but this smart contract is not really a true smart contract, in my opinion, because it's something that's actually just an application that can even be hacked because it's not actually tied directly into the blockchain the way it should be. I don't know. Don't even get me started on that, but it's it's just like, I don't like things that say that they're one thing and then they're not, right? So Portal is a blockchain platform at the core, which means that everything is done with the core blockchain tenants in mind. So everything that's put up on top of Portal cannot be hacked because it's secured by the blockchain. It's actually secured by the blockchain. So that uh, alleviates any sort of worry for anything to be hacked because you simply cannot hack something if it's actually part of the blockchain. And that goes for all of the data, even though the data is itself is not on the blockchain, a hash of the data is on the blockchain. So if that data gets modified or attempted to get modified by anyone other than the person who created it, it just won't happen. The, 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 the chain will reject it and that's it, right? So uh, yeah, we uh, make sure to keep all of that in mind. And this is the only way, in my opinion, that a, that a platform like Portal can survive long-term. It cannot have any sort of ownership. It cannot be run by a company. It cannot have uh, any of these centralized components to it or any ability to be hacked in a traditional sense. So uh, that's what we've made sure that we've uh, enforced in the platform. And anybody who has the will to help us, by all means, please come in and join us and learn and start helping us develop. It's really that simple. Um, there have been multiple new developers who have come in recently um, on both the UI and the core side. Um, I'm talking to another one now who's hopefully going to be able to help out Cal with the core development. And of course, the old, our, our original core developer has been has been coming back and helping out now too. So things are actually moving really, really well right now. Um, I'm extremely happy with that, but we're always, always going to be looking for new developers. So anybody who has any sort of development skill, especially uh, JavaScript and websites built with JavaScript, uh, you guys are going to be absolutely necessary to build the applications that will eventually be in, uh, for lack of a better word, the app store, which is, pro we're probably just going to call it Q apps, um, which will allow any developer to come in, build an application on top of Cordal Data Network, and then share it with others. And so that is going to require a ton of development help, right? Um, right? The UI itself is one thing, and then any application that external developers build can also be part of it, right? So it's uh, definitely going to need developers forever. So yeah. Yeah, and I um, kind of like the the branding there, the Q apps, because you've got the the DApps, right? The decentralized application, right. decentralized finance. And, it, and it's funny because I mentioned branding, 
And a lot of that DeFi and DAP stuff, and you mentioned it before too, is kind of just like a branding marketing thing because so much of it isn't really tied into the blockchain in the way that people think it is. So right. there's a lot more centralization. There's a lot more risk out there than people realize. And with all the stuff that's been going on within DeFi of everybody tokenizing whatever it is that they've got, how many people you know, listening to this right now are like, yeah, I got involved in two or three rug pulls. Man, I lost 10 grand here. Probably everybody has who's starting to go into the DeFi thing because so much money is flowing that direction that there's this money grab. There's this money boom and everybody just wants to tokenize something. Um, but, you know, I guess maybe with that in mind, for people who do want to build something, what is the way that they would monetize it or, or fund it? you know, through the, the Cordal network, right? Because they want to get paid for the work they're doing too. Even if it is open source and it's going to help the community, they still want to get paid for their efforts. I mean, that's understandable. Right, absolutely. And that's totally going to be a thing. We're just trying to avoid the, the ceaseless creation of uh, unlimited nonsense tokens, right? So mm -hmm. if you're just looking to build an application and you're trying to get funding to build that application, you do not need to then launch a token specifically just to raise funds. That is unnecessary. And then that token ends up being, in most cases, a useless token that was just used for fundraising, right? They all go why, to zero, don't they? Yeah, yeah, why do you need this? You do not. And so the plan for Cordal is to use what's called crowdfund with a Q, right? And so what crowdfund is, is it's a smart contract now written in our smart contract language, which is a hardware level smart contract language that actually sits on top of the blockchain and communicates with the blockchain and allows certain things to take place. So this one, the crowdfund AT, um, this one allows you to deploy a crowdfund with information saying, you know, I'm looking for crowdfunding for whatever reason, right? Explain yourself, put up that proposal. And then that AT will sit on the chain and accept donations. Anyone can send court to the AT by simply clicking donate on the, the crowdfund page itself when that's built. We're not quite there yet, but that's something that will be possible in the very near future. Um, and then you will fund that AT. If that AT reaches its goal, it will fund the creator who created it, right? Mm -hmm. If it does not, then it will automatically refund everyone who contributed. So you've got to set your limits in the way that makes sense, right? It forces people to decide, now, how much money do I really need? And how much am I going to be able to get, right? And it makes them be really uh, smart with the way that they create their proposals. It makes them also, you could do it in phases if you want to, right? Like phase one, this much is, is needed for that. Once that gets completed, they can demo it and then say, okay, now it's time for phase two. And I think that that's going to lead to a, a situation where it's not going to be a continual uh, scam that just keeps going and going and going, right? Because if, if you say, okay, I'm doing phase one, I need this much for it. And then phase one fails. Yeah, some people lost a little bit there, but then it just doesn't continue, right? And so it's not like an open-ended crowdfund that allows anybody to just give that person money and they're going to get however much they get. No, they need to decide how much they need and get that amount. And if they get it, then they need to do the work and then they continue that way. So we will be using crowdfund for people who are seeking funding to build an application that's going to benefit the Coral Network in one way or another, right? And so that is the way that that will be done. And then as far as like digital ownership, right? Like that can already be done using the names on Coral, right? So Names on Cordal are not just usernames. They're not just domain names. They are absolutely incredible. They can be an entire brand, right? Hmm. They can be as simple as a digital ownership certificate if you want, or they can be an entire brand with a website, a Git repo, uh, all of the content, all of the followers, all at the same time can then be sold on the names market, which is not quite finished. The names market in the back end is done. Names market in the UI, not quite. And we have to make one change on the core side to allow multiple names to be owned by a single account. Right now it's limited to one, but that's just a setting that we need to change. So um, we will in the future have the ability to have multiple names on each account. You'll be able to set defaults for each name. So you'll say, I want this name to be my username for this account. I want this name to be my domain name for this account, or this and this name is a domain name. This name is a username, whatever, right? So you'll be able to set those defaults and you'll be able to have multiple names on a single account. And then the names market, people can build an entire brand 
and sell that entire brand at one time, no hosting change required, no extra fees for anything. You literally just purchase that name and you are the new owner, then you can start updating it. It's, it's going to be absolutely incredible what can be done with that. So I'm very excited for the names market in the near future. Man, and uh, if people are paying attention as they're listening to this, um, what should be going through their head, or at least it's going through mine, is the middleman in all these different functionalities is gone. Gone. And the middleman is essentially a trustless blockchain system. Right. So even when you talked about the crowdfunding, you've got this escrow service, right, which is charging zero fee for that, by the way. Yep. Um, and they are going to be holding the funds. And if the goal isn't met, that gets refunded back to the people that did it. Right. And, you know, we're going into this trustless world. We don't need to worry about some centralized, you know, controller having authority over it or some other party who just absconds with your money. Right. right? So this is. Uh, man, ringing a, a lot of bells for me and, and a lot of lights are going off. Um, let's take two steps back though. Let's, let's talk a little bit before we get further into the data network about what exists right now in the functionality of the UI, right? Because uh, as I mentioned, you know, I've got that uh, core tector, so to speak, behind me, which, um, you know, I'll, I'll plug you since you probably won't do it. It's something that you guys create um, and will build for people these full node devices for pretty low amount of money. Um, but you also beautifully make it open source. So for people like me that are like, well, I can thumb around and maybe do a couple things. I built one myself using your guys' schematics. So I stole your intellectual property yep. <laughs> and you know, built one to, but you know, I'm helping out the network, right? Right. So and we don't care on. how you get your node built. Right. We don't care if you run an official Cortector that we built or you take our 3D printer files, 3D print your own case and build it yourself. It doesn't matter. We're aiming for benefit to the network, overall benefit for everyone involved in the network in everything that we do. And that's why uh, for me personally, when people say, oh, how can I invest in Proetic or how can I invest in what you are doing? I'm like, I don't really like that, right? You, you can't really invest directly in me. What you can do is invest in court, buy court from the market and that helps everyone and that makes me happy, right? Then mm -hmm. everyone is benefited at the same time. I don't have to worry about people going, oh, he's getting all this money over here. Da, da, da. I just don't like that, right? So I prefer that if you want to invest in what the development team or what me specifically, what we're doing, just buy court. If you do that, then everyone holding court benefits at the same time. And it's just much more cohesive. And we're trying to do all this together, right? Moving forward together, building a network for the future together. And that's, you know, the way I always suggest things to be done. So yeah, there is no intellectual property. That's an idea that I think is an idea of the past. If right. you did something first, the blockchain will know. It will know that you did it first and you'll get the credit for doing it first. And, and that's really all the credit you need, right? And you can make money in other ways. And there's plenty of other ways to make money on Quartal. Build your brand and sell that brand on Quartal. You can do that, right? And that's gonna make uh, money in a much uh, more awesome way, in my opinion, so yeah. Right, right. But but again, I just love the simplified you know, fashion of how everyone can even get involved, right? Because I think yeah. about, you know, if people want to, you know, mine coins or whatever on other networks, you need to go buy like a $10,000 ant miner ASIC or whatever. Meanwhile, for a couple hundred bucks, I built this thing, I've got a full node and it's running 24 seven. And, you know, every single block, I get a share of court, right? So it's not like, oh, I've got to build this huge server farm or something like that to, you know, try and outpace everybody else and, and mint court. So the fact that it's available for everyone, and then if you want to talk about some of the functionality inside the UI now, like the trade portal. Or yeah, I'm going to see, can I share chat. a screen? Let me. Yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead and share. And you could probably walk us through some stuff on the. Yeah, the let UI me here. make sure that I have my little demo account set up here. Um, okay. All right. I'll go from the beginning. Let me get back to that. See if this will work. Um, desktop one should be good enough. Or I wonder if I can just share the UI itself. And eh, whatever, we'll just do this. Okay, can you see it? Yep. All right. So this is the portal UI, and you can see up here. Um, this is running on my MacBook, so uh, it can run on any operating system. Up here, you can see that uh, that's the portal core icon, just demonstrating that the portal core is also running. Um, so here, if you are a new user, you would click create account. 
and follow the instructions here. It's really, really simple. You can basically just click next through everything and make sure you save your backup file in multiple places. That's about it. Um, once you have an account created, you will have oops, a saved account. And I'm going to go into this display name account here. And from here, you are into the Cordal UI. So you have your wallet. Up here will tell you your mentor level. So this account is obviously level zero because I did not sponsor it because it's literally just an account I use for demos. Um, and you have your wallet. You have the Send coin. Now your wallet, you have multiple different wallets here. You have Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and Quartz. So you have the ability to store Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Bitcoin in your Quartal UI. And multiple other coins will also be supported in the near future. We're trying to support Pirate Chain and Monero and any coin basically that was launched in a fair way and was not an ICO and was not you know some cash grab scheme, right? So, um, and the new parts that we've just added recently for people who have seen portal before but have not seen this uh this is one of the new plugins called websites right hmm. so in here you can see all of the current websites and this was just launched today and you can see already there are multiple websites that have been put up it's it, very very simple to publish a website you literally just click publish website you choose the name that you want to publish it on choose a file, which would be a zip file of the static content in the website that you want and you publish it. And then once that happens, it comes up on the main websites page here and you can click the website to view it. <laughs> so that. inside of the UI, you, you no longer need to use a web browser, you know, and this is all for stuff that's hosted on top of QDN only, right? So if you're trying to access a website that's not on QDN, you cannot do that from within the UI, but everything that is hosted on top of QDN can be hosted or can be accessed from within the UI. So this is my uh, company website. So this is the, the device that we were talking about, uh, the Cortector. And so right now the payment processing and stuff, we still have to do a little bit of development to get that to work inside of the, the static site here. But uh, you can see that I just converted this site, which is actually a WordPress site, um, and I ran it through something called HTT Rack, and that is a program that converts the site to a static site for you. It took me like three minutes to convert the site, and it made a zip for me, and I uploaded that zip here, and that's literally as simple as it is. Um, and then now we also have in QChat, now QChat on the general chat, this is a global chat, um, so anyone in Cordal can communicate here. Um, this chat now also has avatars which you can add to your uh chat before you could not have mm -hmm. avatars now people can have avatars because of the quarter data network now existing so you can actually go into the name registration here and set an avatar that will now show up uh in different places in the ui and we will also have a, a page soon where you'll be able to do a whole profile right so you can think of it as like a, a social media type profile, but it's an underlying profile that will follow you no matter what you access on QDN. So it makes it so that you don't have to continually fill out a bunch of new profiles for every single uh, service that you end up using. This underlying infrastructure is what I was talking about before. It allows it so that you don't need to create a new username and password for everything. You don't need to create a new profile for everything. Your profile that you create will just follow you around, right? So it's so much easier uh, That's awesome. overall, right? Yeah. So, and then here is the new data management pr uh, plugin. So now what data management is, this shows you all of the data that's currently on your node. So if you say, oh, that person's profile, a picture or whatever, it really bothers me and offends me, you can come in here and delete it and block that person's uh, data and you will no longer see their, their image, right? So anything in here is fully uh, controllable. So I've made the croetic.com website. So I now have that website on this node. If I decided that I didn't want that to be there anymore, I just would unfollow it and then delete it and that data would no longer be on my node. I would no longer be a peer for it that would be serving it to other people, right? So you have full control over every bit of data that's on your machine. Every bit of data that passes through on the back end that you do not view is fully encrypted and chunked. So there's no way that you can view that data unless you specifically decide to view it. So viewing and following is the only way that that data becomes useful data on your node. If you do not 
uh, view or follow that data, there is absolutely no way that you can view that data at all. So any data that's being relayed through your node, if you have relay mode turned on, which is the default, because that helps get the data propagated to everybody who's looking for it, right? So we have that sure. set as a default, you can disable it, but there's really no reason to, because there's no way that you can view that data unless you specifically do it. So people who are concerned about what data might be coming and going through their node, there's no reason to be concerned about that because it's literally all encrypted and chunked and each chunk goes one at a time. So you literally don't even have all of the data at once on your node relaying regardless, right? So it's really, right. really secure and there's no reason to be concerned about what data might be relayed through your node. Just to address these concerns before people uh, start asking these questions because this is and always like the main question, right? So the course, only way that you can see the data is by viewing or following it. <laughs> yeah. And and from my understanding of it, everything that's being done within here is um, some level of encryption as well too, right? So right, you right. Know, the, exactly. the chat functionality. Um, the even only when... thing that isn't fully encrypted right now, um, it is still base 58 encoded, but uh, group chats at this moment in time are not fully encrypted. They are base 58 encoded. So there's still... Like they look like nonsense unless you decode them. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the the group encryption is not something that we've enabled yet. We will, but I wanted to see it done in a slightly different way and uh, just a, and a superior version of group encryption. So um, we are going to be building that in the near future so that group chats will also be fully encrypted. But every message, so say if you send a private message here, I'll just send one to my other account and say, hello, right? If you send a private message, you'll see that that message shows up with a lock on it, right? And right. The, that lock means that that message is encrypted. So PMs on QChat cannot be read by anyone other than the two people involved in the PM. And it will be like that for group chat in the near future. Right now, it's just base 58 encoded. Um, there's also a new fun little plugin called Puzzles, which is literally just uh, like puzzles that you can figure out. And if you guess the answer correctly, you get rewarded. Uh, this one's first one's reward is 40 quarts. So if you guess the answer to this one, all the other ones here have been guessed already incorrectly. But if you guess the answer to this one correctly, you could win 40 quarts. So we have a few little fun games and stuff that we're going to be developing too. Um, I also want to see the lottery smart contract get put in really soon, um, which will allow people to play a decentralized automated lottery uh, that runs as the same thing as smart contracts sitting on top of the chain and will reward people who get the correct ticket, right? So lots sure. of little fun games like that uh, to win court and to just keep engagement. Um, but now with the websites, I'm sure that there's going to be a whole lot of engagement going on anyway, because who doesn't want to host a website that is completely free, right? All you have to have is a name registration, right? So the name registration costs you 0 0.001 court right now, which is basically nothing, right? So once Actually, you have that of, name, yeah. you do not need to pay for any sort of hosting. You do not need to pay for any sort of publishing. You do not need to pay for anything else after that. Once you have that, you publish data for free. We use the memory, uh, memory proof of work algo, just like we do for the sending of messages in QChat to put up the data hashes on the chain. So we don't even charge you a transaction fee to put up the transaction on the chain, right? So it's literally completely free. So you can host a website here. And if you put up a website, it will stay there indefinitely unless you take it down. So there's no need to pay for a server, right? There's no server hosting it. You don't have to continually pay for that. You don't have to continually pay for a domain name because there's no need for it. You have a registered name. You don't need a domain name. That registered name is a one-time fee. So if you put up a website, that website stays there forever unless you decide to take it down. So that's going to be really interesting to see what happens in the future too, as this grows and evolves. And like, you can say, oh, this was one of the first sites that was put up a long time ago and whatever. It's just going to be interesting to see, right? So, uh, and this is really, really helpful for people uh, who have been deplatformed from things like uh, YouTube and so forth. And we are going to, in the near future, have a demo application built that will be a, a web uh, or sorry, a video hosting platform and also a blog and also a um, like social media type platform. So we will have literal, literal replacements for things like YouTube and you will not need to worry about being deplatformed. You will not need to worry about being censored or any sort of nonsense like that. Once you put up that content, that content stays there forever. So uh, it, it's really, really unique and interesting. And now that we have this functionality, this is what basically everyone has been waiting for, right? Like this is yep. like, 
the main feature of Cordal. This is what Cordal is supposed to do. So this is absolutely incredible. And we're very, very excited to show this off to everyone and allow people to start making use of this. So if you've been deplatformed from other places, now you have a new place where you cannot be deplatformed and you can post your data and get your information out to everyone worldwide uh, right from within Cordal. So yeah, it's uh, pretty amazing, man. I, I couldn't be happier. Things are going really, really well. Yeah, today is a really big day in you know the history of Cordal and like you said before, just the history of blockchain technology, Web 3.0, quote unquote, you know that type of stuff. Oh, um, I didn't show the trade portal. If you want me to show that, uh, well, that's okay. I mean, you know, we're probably running up on time anyway. Yeah. But um, you know, frankly, the way that people should get involved would be to go to Cordal.org, which is kind of your man, uh, main landing page. And then from there, you can either, you know, get involved in the social channels, be it Telegram or Discord, which seems like in the future, those will be cordial functionalities. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And those might just disappear entirely. Although, you know, there might still be some uh, links back to, you know, other systems to still have onboarding ramps for people to come in. Well, course. what we could do is just set up uh, basically a hosted UI and allow people to uh, communicate without installing anything and still utilizing QChat. So the, it's, it's possible to basically proxy stuff from the traditional internet. Uh, and same goes for websites too. So you can actually set up a portal node as a proxy so that you can use a regular domain and proxy to a, a, a site hosted on top of portal. So uh, we could do the same thing with the communications on QChat. So we could actually have like just a web page that allows people to communicate or whatever, and any sort of application. We're going to have uh, multiple mobile applications coming out in the near future as well. Um, even a mobile application that can mint. So you can actually mint coins using a phone or a tablet. Um, that is going to be something that'll happen in the near future. I've already actually been demoing a uh, Android mobile wallet. That's just a simple wallet, but it has QR code scanning and being able to send and receive coins and register names. Uh, and that's already something that we're demoing that one of our developers has put together. Um, so yeah, we are going to have a whole plethora of amazing stuff coming out now because we've been waiting on the uh, ability to host data because a lot of things require you know static data so without that static data we couldn't really get any further so this uh phase of the portal development and portal launch is absolutely the one that we have been waiting for to allow basically everything else that's going to be able to happen in the future to happen so i am extremely excited about this one yeah yeah to me it's um uh, you know, the whole Cordal chain is infrastructure, right? And mm -hmm. at first there was this bulldozing and clearing of space, right? And then you, you know, you lay the pipes in there, right? The cement has been poured. And now we're starting to see some steel girders that are starting to pop up. And you can almost see like the skyscraper in your mind that's starting to, to you know, propagate. So I'm, I'm pumped for it. Um, for anybody who's, you know, watching the video, if you haven't gotten involved in Coral, go to Coral.org, go check it out. Um, you're not too late because frankly, it's still relatively inexpensive compared to things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this isn't just another token or fork off of something like this. So I'm not going to give any price predictions, but do the math yourself when you're talking about major components of the digital ecosystem being like the core chain functionality, this is a core chain. So where it can go, that just depends on what kind of energy and enthusiasm and developers come in to continue to build and utilize off of the Coral network. And, and frankly, when I look at the numbers, the number of nodes has been growing, the number of new people coming to the community has been growing, the number of activities activity, speaking of the trade portal, uh, the trade portal activity has been doubling um, over the past few months from just the number of peer-to-peer uh, -peer atomic swaps that are happening inside there as well. So yeah, lots, lots of stuff to be excited about. But we'll leave that for maybe a third conversation between <laughs> yeah. you and I. Uh, great speaking with you today, Jason. Really appreciate the time. And for everybody out there, get yourself over to Cordal.